Oh? I didn't think I would see you here. Are these two your friends? Yes. We had the fortune of meeting not too long ago. They are quite a knowledgeable and talented pair, and a pleasure to be around. Traveler, we were just discussing the history of Rex Lapis. Would you like to listen? Uh, this good sir seems not to appreciate the almighty power of the Lord of Geo. As a professional archaeologist, I'm inclined to correct some of his erroneous views. We are discussing the whereabouts of the First Mora. The First Mora? As everyone knows, the Lord of Geo taught the ancient people of Lyra the craft of smelting creating goods that allowed them to develop trade with the early nations of that time. Today, Liyue holds the sole right to cast Mora in the entire continent of Tivat. The world's very first Mora should have been cast by the hands of the Lord of Geo himself thousands of years ago. According to my research, as well as my own hypothesis, I believe that this coin of unique historical significance has been passed down secretly through the years as a kind of token. For example, Perhaps the Qixing who control the Liyue use it in some kind of unknown ceremony they hold when they come to power. No, no, no. My research indicates that the first Mora coin is not such a simple thing. Mora is a catalyst. This we all know. Even today, Mora is used in the mystic arts for its curious properties of weapon enhancement. The world's first Mora would no doubt possess the strongest power. My next historical treatise will boldly expound on the newest findings from my intense decade-long research. That is, that the Lord of Geo used this original Mora as a catalyst to enhance a dagger and a sword. A dagger and a sword? Well, buy the book when it comes out to read the full story. <laughs> For now, I will only reveal this. The one who finds the dagger shall become supreme in Liyue. And the one who finds the sword may be crowned Liyue's sovereign. I can't say I agree. Hmm? <clears throat> Let us not speak of the authenticity of the dagger and sword first. But Mora and Money came about simply because they are a convenient measure of a contract's value. Rex Lapis just meant for Mora to serve as a catalyst for people to exchange and trade. The world's first Mora is probably just an ordinary coin created by Rex Lapis. As for its fate, the same as all Mora, I suspect. It was simply spent somewhere. Hmm. I think that Mr. Hanshua's hypothesis seems reasonable. Mr. Zhongli's argument, on the other hand, lacks any evidence. How can you so easily dismiss the Lord of Geo's profound foresight? No, no, I am not debating right or wrong. I am simply stating a fact. Enough! Do you think you understand the Lord of Geo more than me? I know but little about history. And I wouldn't dare to brag. But discussion is meaningless if everyone has the same opinion, no? Well then, answer me this. Long ago, when Liyue Harbor was being constructed, the Lord of Geo taught the people how to build houses. The model home he used to teach them was completely cast from Mora, correct? That is correct, indeed. Okay then, tell me. Why would the Lord of Geo do something so extravagant, if not because of the mystical power that Mora contains? There's a simple explanation, really. To the god of wealth and commerce, what material is easier to get than Mora? Uh, oh. Huh. <laughs> I mean, I am talking about Rex Lapis. Hmm. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, I have some questions about archaeology. Can we find somewhere quiet to chat? I mean, if it's okay with you. Oh, it's no problem at all. But may my friend accompany us? Perhaps they could be of some help. Of course. They can come if that's what pleases you, sir. Let's go.
What I'm about to say is a bit disrespectful of the Lord of Geo and would draw a lot of angry looks. So it's best to discuss this somewhere quiet. Your argument just now exhibited acuteness of speech and thought. Most importantly, you don't fall for the boasting and acting of the others. You remain objective. So I have a question for you. Perhaps you will answer differently from other scholars. Do you think that all the gods that the Geo Archon killed were evil? Let's not analyze it in terms of good versus evil. Rex Lapis placed great importance on the integrity of contracts. So any gods he killed certainly must have broken some kind of contract. Right! The Lord of Geo wouldn't kill the innocent. But when I was doing some research, I learned about the legend of the God of Salt. The God of Salt, Havria, was a very kind god. But she encountered Morax one day in battle. Morax used a rather underhanded trick to... assassinate her. What? No way! This... this bit of history is a long story. But you may not like the truth when you hear it. Don't worry, please tell me what you know. This event... I've already searched for answers for a long time. No, it's just... <sighs> Where should I begin? Over here! Mr. Zhang Li! I've been looking for you! <laughs> ah, so you're over here all this time. Put down your weapon and stay back! Otherwise... Uh... Paimon's reporting you to the Millilith! First of all, I'm not holding a weapon. Ouch. There's no need to overreact now. I'm simply an archaeological researcher from Snezhnaya. I'm not here for trouble. The Fatui say that every time! But this time, I registered with the Liyue Ministry of Civil Affairs. I could show you the official documentation if you want to see it. I will be conducting an archaeological survey here, the results of which will all be shared with the Ministry. I heard that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor had a consultant named Zhang Li, with immense knowledge of ancient history and archaeology. So I paid Wangsheng Funeral Parlor a handsome amount to hire Zhang Li as my own consultant while I'm in town. So you mean to say that this is work for the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, yes? Well, since it's work, I don't have a choice. A consultant of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor must respect their duty. Of course you would be such a reasonable man. Well then, let's head out now, shall we? Wait, if you are studying archaeology, can I go too? I am also a scholar in this field, so I can help. That will give us a chance to continue the topic we were just discussing. Oh, and you should tag along too. This experience may be of help to you on your future adventures. It is a story from before the Rise of the Seven. Although the God of Salt has already perished, it will still be a meaningful experience for your journey. This is... wait. This is an archaeological expedition, not a tour group. That's too many people. But this friend of mine has a treasure-finding talent, surpassed by no one. It will surely be of great help to us. Oh? What talent? If my friend espies a treasure chest, they will absolutely find a way to open it. Hey, Paimon's good at that, too! Well, that is quite enticing. All right, then. Well, let's go. There's no time to waste. When the Overlord of the Vortex was crushed by the Jade Chamber recently, perhaps something of interest was washed ashore. An ancient artifact would be good. Traces of ancient activity would be great. But a piece of the God's limb would be even better. Who knows what surprises we may find. This place looks so ordinary. Can we really find anything valuable here? Huh? Paimon thinks it looks really grand. I don't mean the scenery, but rather that there should be something out of the ordinary. A big battle did just occur and all, and I don't even know where to begin looking here. Guyan Stone Forest is actually the perfect place to be, if you wish to learn about the gods or the history of the Archon War. Legend has it that Rex Lapis threw spears made of large rock into the sea here. 
piercing and crushing the Overlord of the Vortex. After many years of wind erosion, those stone spears have turned into the unique rock formations we see now. These mountains were the Lord of Geo's weapons? What we see now is just the part of them that remains. The stone spears hurled by Rex Lapis all those years ago were much greater, both in number and in size. But due to the different angles they landed at, their large centers of mass, erosion by seawater and years of gravity, many of them have been completely swallowed by the sea. So besides wind erosion, the initial collapsing of the stone spears also played a big part in the formation of Guyan Stone Forest. Well, a god able to fight one so powerful as Rex Lapis was certainly very strong in its own right. Indeed. This is where the value lies in research at Guyan Stone Forest. Most of the objects from that time were lost to the sea. But the gigantic waves created by the Overlord of the Vortex have given those sunken objects a chance to see the light of day again. So you're saying that if we look carefully, we'll be able to get very, very rich at... Uh, I mean, rich with archaeological knowledge and historical value, yes? <laughs> That's all I seek in life. <laughs> well, since we brought so many people, I think it would be best to split up and look. Okay then, I will go with my friend here. Although I have a smattering of knowledge in various disciplines, when it comes to archaeology, I can't compete with the expert here. Huh? M me What's the matter? This is your profession. Why are you so surprised? I get it. I'll escort him then. Okay. If we find anything valuable or rare, let's meet on the shore opposite from here. You call yourself a scholar of archaeology? You can't even recognize this or that. What are you good for? We all have our areas of expertise. I already tried very hard to explain. Oh, stop arguing! What in the world happened? This girl just keeps bragging about how she's an archaeologist, but she doesn't even know anything about the surrounding ruins. I even know more than her. She left me to rely solely on guessing, I mean experience, to find anything valuable to take back. Ugh, what a waste of time. Uh, I've just been researching the God of Salt, so I'm not familiar with sea relics. Is that so strange? And you! You kept asking about how much Mora everything is worth! Can the value of relics only be measured in Mora? I... I mean, isn't measuring their value in Mora the easiest way? Uh, this also matches the traditions of Liyue, does it not? Now, now, calm down. No need to make a fuss. We were able to bring back some intriguing objects. Let's have a look. Oh... What a shame. <sighs> These objects were indeed washed ashore by the Overlord of the Vortex, but they have nothing to do with the god besides being in the vicinity at the time. This stone slab we found, however, has a mysterious pattern and faint aura of divine power. Perhaps it will be useful for research purposes. Quick, give it to me! <laughs> At least we didn't come for nothing. The power of the gods, yes! This is good. <laughs> oh, but these other objects are certainly worth a little something, right? <laughs> it should be enough to cover the cost of hiring you. It's all mine. So, it's only valuable for research if there are remnants of divine power on it? Not at all. My quest to uncover the history of the God of Salt is because history can tell us about culture and beliefs. But you? You're just trying to use archaeology to get rich! Nonsense! I'm a professional archaeology researcher from Snezhnaya! I swear! If I'm lying, may the Lord of Geo strike me down! Oh, by the way, you probably don't want to sell that teacup. Oh? Why is that? That's not an ancient teacup. It's part of Ningguang's collection. It must have fallen here along with the Jade Chamber. So unless you want to mess with the Qi Sing... Ah, I see. What a shame. It was of such high quality, too. See? You do want to sell these objects! 
But I, so what? Why can't I pursue wealth both intellectual and material? Don't be so simple-minded. <sighs> All right then, no need to stay here any longer. Hmm, I'm rather quite intrigued by the God of Salt too, actually. Let's go to Sal Terai next. I heard that Sal Terai was once the home of the God of Salt's people. Therefore, <laughs> there are sure to be loads of valuable relics nearby. According to legend, the people of the God of Salt, Havria, enjoyed prosperous lives under her protection. But this legend has been around for ages. With the countless scrap collectors and treasure hoarders in the area, there probably aren't many valuable things left here. Oh, that's just great. If I knew it was picked this clean before, I wouldn't have come. About that. I know there's a ruin deep in this cave here. It's related to the God of Salt, which is actually how the area originally got its name of Sal Terai. However, the ruin entrance has been sealed by a mysterious power. Nobody has been able to break the seal. I found a mechanism that seemed to be related to the seal, but when I undid the mechanism, the seal wasn't affected at all. So at the moment, the seal's origin and how to break it are very important topics in my research on the God of Salt. I don't know, there's no concrete evidence, but I'm pretty sure the seal is meant to hide some kind of long-forgotten truth. The God of Salt was a benevolent god, adored by the people, not to mention powerful. She wouldn't have any kind of shameful secrets to hide. So, the one who wants to hide some truth is very possibly her killer. Morax. This doesn't sound like something the Lord of Geo would do, though. Who cares about all that? It sounds like countless treasures of the God of Salt lie within this ruin, just waiting for someone to find them, right? You weren't listening at all, were you? Ugh. Even if there's a mountain of treasures inside, nobody can get in if the seal isn't broken. Ah, but we have the illustrious Mr. Zhang Li with us. He looks like he knows just about everything. A little seal shouldn't be any trouble for him. This seal seems to be quite ancient. Even Mr. Zhang Li may not know all of its secrets. I may know something about it. Wh what Over the years, I've heard various rumors with bits of knowledge about seals. Although their references seem rather disorderly, they do in fact contain the secret to breaking seals. Let's go take a look at the mechanism Miss Wanyan just mentioned. Okay, since Mr. Zhongli says so, follow me then. This place seems familiar. Huh, I remember. I think there's some elemental monuments here. So you're saying they're related to all this? When I investigated the seal last time, I had someone with a vision accompany me. But when we lit up all the elemental monuments, nothing happened. That's because you don't just need to activate them at the same time, but in a certain order as well. Otherwise, the seal will not be broken. The secret to this puzzle is hidden in the legends about the Archon War. Tianhong in the south, Yao Guang in the east, Zhuiyun in the west, Qingzhe in the north. All desolate and devoid of life. Liu is vast, yet even one haven is hard to find. To the north, to the east, do the people of Liyue always talk in riddles? I, I think I've heard this saying before. Certainly you have. And the contents of this saying are also related to the God of Salt. To provide a haven for her people, whose lives had been ravaged by the Archon War, this benevolent god searched all across Liyue. At that time, with the chaotic fires of war engulfing the land, even one sliver of peace was a luxury. And that haven she eventually found is right here. Today, it is known as Sal Terai. How sad then. In the end, this peaceful place was destroyed by Morax. Okay, enough with these ancient stories. Now that we have the clue, hurry up and break the seal. Whatever happened doesn't matter as long as we can get inside that ruin. Tianhong in the south, Yao Guang in the east, Zhuiyun in the west, Qingzhe in the north. With this clue, you should be able to solve the puzzle. <laughs>